Hi, this is Dr. Diana, both doctor and patient, and I am pretty ill. As part of the series on Ehlers-Danlos, I wanted to discuss the vascular form of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. This one is a tough one to deal with because it causes vessels and organs to be very fragile. Patients will be hypermobile, but oftentimes it's just in the smaller joints, say in the hands. Their skin tends to be fairly translucent, and oftentimes you can see the blood vessels on the chest or in the abdomen very easily. They tend to bruise very easily and are prone to arterial, intestinal, and even uterine rupture. These patients must be watched closely for dilation of their aortic roots also. Vascular EDS patients will sometimes have a particular facial appearance that you can identify. Their nose sometimes will seem thin and pinched. Their lips will seem thin. They um, tend to have very little subcutaneous fat on their arms and limbs. Their eyes may appear large and they oftentimes don't have ear lobes per se. Okay. Um, you also can see premature aging sometimes in their hands and feet. We call that acrogeria. They can get tendon or muscle ruptures fairly easily. I had one friend just tear his ACL stepping off of a curb. Um, some are born with a club foot. You may see early onset varicose veins and a pneumothorax. Even upon birth, that is not uncommon. Gum recession is typical, and we always ask about a family history of sudden death, usually from a vascular event. The genetic defect involves a COL3A1 gene, which affects collagen type 3, so at least we have this one identified. Now, all of this sounds horribly frightening if it weren't for Dr. Hal Dietz. This is a wonderful doctor and researcher in this arena. Our family was blessed to be able to see him, and when you do, you will understand why he is the Art of Listening Award winner for 2010. He's working aggressively for a cure for vascular Ehlers-Danlos. How great is that? Now, if you were found to have vascular Ehlers-Danlos through genetic testing, I would strongly recommend that you try to see this man, but if you can't, he's very popular. Um, be sure to ask your treating physician about starting treatment with Losartan. Okay? Now, Dr. Dietz also helped to identify a similar syndrome called appropriately the Lloyd's Dietz syndrome. Um, it also involves fragile vessels, especially the aortas, and aortic roots must be carefully monitored as they need to be treated much earlier than, say, for Marfan syndrome, for example. This syndrome involves the TGF beta R1 and 2 genes. The condition shares some of the characteristics of Marfanism uh, a tall stature, kind of lean appearance, uh, long fingers, etc. Patients may have widely spaced eyes, a cleft palate, or what we call a bifid uvula, which is a double or forked little hangy downy thing in the back of the throat, you know, the uvula back there. Um, arterial tortuosity and aneurysms are often seen too. Now, of course, the joint hypermobility, the translucent skin, congenital heart problems, scoliosis, which we all seem to have, um, and duralectasia can also be seen. But duralectasia is often seen in other forms of Ehlers-Danlos. Um, I have it in my cervical or neck region. Um, dura is the membrane that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord, and it can stretch and bulge, especially if the fluid pressure within it is, is fairly high. All of these Ehlers-Danlos syndromes seem to overlap in some patients, like me and my family. Uh, we have so many things overlap, it just boggles your mind. We have the Marfanoid habitus, which means we're tall, lean, and have fairly long fingers. My daughter has the bifid uvula, which means we were tested for Lloyd's Deeds. Um, we have easy bruising, semi-transparent skin, duralectasia. My sister had a club foot. We've had two deaths in the family and children due to vascular events. So there is overlap there for sure. Um, until we have all of the genes identified for Ehlers-Danlos, we can use skin biopsies to see what the collagen looks like. We can look at patient features, family history. 
We can rule out vascular Ehlers-Danlos and Roy's Dietz syndrome with genetic testing if we need to. So we can usually identify Marfan syndrome with genetic testing also, but not always. Tough one. So this is why you need a geneticist who is very experienced with clinical diagnoses of Ehlers-Danlos. It can be tricky for sure. Now, my parting word today is hope because researchers such as Dr. Hal Dietz are providing hope. And it won't be long before we have answers in a treatment for vascular Ehlers-Danlos. Dr. Dietz is predicting answers within five years. How cool is that? So, okay, my friends, until next time, let's change our worlds one brain cell at a time if we have to. Gentle hugs to you all. Love you.